What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets with Rob. How's everybody doing? Hopefully, if you're in the Northeast, you're staying safe because it is snowstorm. Before I get started, uh, talking about could the Mets possibly trade Noah Syndergaard? Guys, if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button at the bottom. And if you enjoy my content, enjoy my videos, and want to see more videos to come, don't forget, guys, press the subscribe button. And if you press the bell notification button, you'll get all the notifications you need when I post videos and when I go live, guys. All right, guys, so let's get started. So could the Mets possibly trade Noah Syndergaard? I don't believe so. But it is a possibility. Why do I say that? Because the Mets in arbitration paid Noah Syndergaard $9.7 million for the 2021 season. Obviously, he is an unrestricted free agent after the 21 season. But the reason why I talk about could the Mets possibly trade Noah Syndergaard is because of two reasons. One, could they afford to pay him? And two, the Mets have other players that they need to pay and those two players are Lindor and Michael Conforto. So when it comes to Noah Syndergaard, the $9.7 million that they are going to pay him because of the arbitration deal that they made together, that is an extra $9.7 million for a player who's coming off Tommy John surgery, who is probably going to take a little while to get started, even when if he does come in in May, what they're talking about, he's, he's um, ahead of schedule and could be possibly here in May, you're not going to make him pitch six, seven, eight innings, 100 pitches every time he comes out. So if, if you're going to limit his pitching, say for the next two to three months, say from May to June, say, or May to July, to ramp him back up to see what he's really going to be is really interesting because you don't really know what he will do for the rest of the season. So could you possibly look at scenarios to trade Noah Syndergaard? We know he's been a good pitcher for us. In 2019, he had a 4.28 ERA. That could have been because he actually needed Tommy John surgery. He might have been feeling pain. There could have been a lot of issues with his elbow that he didn't even know about in 2019. Clearly, we know about in 2020, he needed Tommy John. But in 2016, he was an all-star. He had a 2.6 ERA. He was very good. And you know what? He had other good years. In 2015, he had a 3.24 year. He had 2.97 in 2017. And in 2018, he had 3.03. .03. And obviously in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, he only played in seven. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, he played in seven, uh, seven games. That was because he had that lat injury in Washington. So we couldn't really, you know, there's really no season. He was done for the year, basically. But he looked good when he came back in 2018. So what am I talking about when it comes to could the Mets possibly trade him? Yes, they could. Is it because they might be getting Trevor Bauer soon? And that's another extra money on that payroll? And could they afford Noah Syndergaard? What would Noah Syndergaard's deal look like if the Mets decide to extend Syndergaard past the 2021 season. Well, I want you to look at a familiar Met who is now a Philly, Zach Wheeler. The reason why I say that is because, all right, Syndergaard is a little bit younger and Wheeler is a little bit older. Wheeler was 30 years old when he took that uh, contract last year. And Noah Syndergaard is only going to be 27, 27, 28 years old when he's a free agent. So he's two years younger. So can you look at a deal that's worth five years, $118 million, which Zach, the Phillies gave Zach Wheeler? That's the type of deal I think Noah Syndergaard would be looking for because unless he comes back from Tommy John and pitches at an all-star Cy Young type level, he's not going to get what Wheeler got. Oh, well, sorry, what Wheeler got and what uh, possibly what Scherzer got and Strasburg and Corbin there's a lot of players, pitchers in this league that could have been on the level of Noah Syndergaard or Noah Syndergaard could be, have been at their level and could have been very good and he could have made a mint if he stayed healthy. He could have been in the 170, 180, $200 million range, possibly, if Noah Syndergaard stayed healthy. But because of the Tommy John surgery, and I do think uh, Noah Syndergaard is a better pitcher than Zach Wheeler when healthy, 
because of the Tommy John surgery and because you don't know what he could be, the Mets could possibly look at a deal to structure around Noah Syndergaard that is very similar to Zach Wheeler, the five years, $118 million. Now, granted, the reason why they could trade him is because maybe they don't want, they don't think that they can give him that money when they know they have to pay Michael Conforto and Francisco Lindor. Now, there's a possibility the Mets might have to choose two out of the three. Now, are, Mets fans, are you willing to lose Michael Conforto to pay Francisco Lindor and Noah Syndergaard? Or are you, would you risk losing Francisco Lindor to pay your two guys on the team, Noah Syndergaard and Michael Conforto? Or you don't pay Syndergaard and you keep Michael Conforto and you keep Francisco Lindor. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of reasons why the Mets could possibly look to trade Noah Syndergaard. Now you can say, well, the Mets might not have value. So Noah Syndergaard might not have the value to trade him. So why would you trade him when you're only paying him a little less than $10 million for this coming year? Well, there's a possibility there's teams that can actually want him even though of the Tommy John surgery, the perfect example to look at is what the Padres did with uh, Clevenger. Cleveland was willing to trade the Padre to uh, Clevenger to the Padres, knowing that he needed Tommy John surgery. But the Padres was like, you know what? We know he's a good pitcher. He's gonna come back. All the all the information and results of past Tommy John surgeries with a lot of pitchers showing them that they could be better pitchers coming back from Tommy John surgery, and the Padres took that chance. So a team could take that chance on Noah Syndergaard when he's 27, 28 years old. He's still young and can say the Mets can get a pretty good return back for Noah Syndergaard. That's a possibility. So I am not saying that I want to trade Noah Syndergaard. I am talking about the Mets looking into trading or possibly trading Noah Syndergaard because of the possible contract they could give to him and might lose out on Michael Conforto and Francisco Lindor. I say there's about a 50-50 chance the Mets would extend all three, Francisco Lindor, Noah Syndergaard, and Michael Conforto. Now, if you have a 50-50 chance of most likely signing those three guys, there's a big possibility that the Mets are going to choose Francisco Lindor because of what they gave up to trade for him and Michael Conforto because Michael Conforto seems like he's extending to an all-star caliber player over the next couple of years. He showed it in 2020 and he talked about that he stopped watching video of himself in the middle of 2019 because in the, in the early parts of 2019, uh, Michael Conforto was not playing well and was hitting really bad. And in the second part of 2019, he started to stop watching video and started to get better. And in 2020, you saw the type of player he could be. And is that the player you expect Michael Conforto to be? In my opinion, yes. Francisco Lindor is a no doubt. I think the Mets have to sign him. They have to extend him. So I think Noah Syndergaard could be the odd man out. And it would be very unfortunate if the Mets keep Noah Syndergaard and do not trade him, that they can lose him. Yes, they can get a pick if they extend him a qualifying offer after the 2021 season. But to lose Noah Syndergaard for nothing could be a situation where it's like, damn, we could have got something for Noah Syndergaard. What could we get? I don't know. There's not really been reports out there. But at the end of the day, the Mets could get value back for Noah Syndergaard. Now, to recap, guys, about could the Mets possibly trade Noah Syndergaard? There's a reason for that, and the reason is Michael Conforto and Francisco Lindor. They could cost around... $450 $450 million. What could a Conforto contract look like? Well, just look at Springer. He got six years, $150 million. I think Michael Conforto get a little more than that money-wise. But to give him six years between $150 and $180 million, that's a lot of money to add to the payroll. And then projections of Francisco Lindor's contract could be anywhere between seven to 10 years for $300 plus million dollars. You're looking at the Mets paying for two players over $450 million. And if the Mets happen to sign Noah Syndergaard as well, that's another 100 to $120 million extra. So in total, you're paying close to 
seven hundred million dollars for three players, not including what you have to do with your other players to make this team better and to help give flexibility to this Mets team when they need a player at the deadline or somebody they might think about signing. Also, there's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of money to go around. But to recap, Noah Syndergaard, could the Mets possibly trade him? Yes, they could. Because they're probably focused on Francisco Lindor and Michael Conforto to extend them. And the possible numbers that Noah Syndergaard can get with years and money could look similar to Zach Wheeler so five years, $118 million. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, guys, please press the like button. And if you like this video, you like my other videos, and you want to see more, don't forget to press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys, and let's go Mets.